Okay guys, so in this video you and I are going to talk about content placeholders. So let's get into it. Let's go over what we are going to cover. So how does a React app feel on a slow connection? And how can we make the load time feel better? Now let's talk talk just very briefly about these two things. So you and I are very accustomed to working on a laptop and most likely in a local environment and it's very often that you know it, it's kind of necessary right you you work at the local on a local environment to get that performance and speed so that you can iterate quickly and build UIs and doing all this awesome great stuff and then you pull out your production application you deploy your application and maybe or maybe you start off with some local testing on your desktop and then you put your screen into mobile mode and stuff like that and maybe if you're really good at what you do you take out your mobile device and you actually or your tablet or something like that then you check around a little bit in your local environment you push the thing to your web server that is hosted on the cloud somewhere and good job you're done. Now, the issue with a lot of people's perception about this process is that there is one step that is missing. And that's the step that I think is most, well, it's not most important, but it is a step that is very vital. And that is, what is the experience going to be for a user that is not in your the ideal conditions because the thing is that there are two things that we very often forget when we deploy web applications because especially when we use SPA such as React and like these client side solutions with a lot of JavaScript is that the more weight you add to your system the longer your load time is going to be and sure if you are testing everything on a desktop or a mobile device on a really good connection it's great but have you ever thought about what the experience is going to be for somebody on a very bad connection or even worse what is the experience going to be if you have a lot of ads or third party javascript or stuff like that that slows down your page because sooner or later your page is going to have so much weight that it actually starts impacting performance so let's go to, let's just walk through this so I argue that React is a great tool, but it has a few limitations. And one of those limitations I want to show you in this video, and I also show I want to also touch on a nice way that you can improve this because I'm not going to focus so much on making React faster or making you know using tricks that can improve your load times. I'm going to focus on showing you a technique that is I think is pretty cool in order to make the experience while you're waiting for the load to feel nicer. So let's just dive in now. So first and foremost, let's look at the R Webpack configuration. So we have an entry point, we have our output, that's going to be the bundle JS, we have the Babel loader and a preset for React so we can transpile and all that good stuff. We have a server that is running on port 3000. Then we have the app, which is going to serve static assets, and then we are sending an index.html file for the root, and if you go to slash foo, we are going to serve up foo.html. And here is our bundle file, which is the webpack output, and here is our main entry point and stuff like that. We, we, we will touch on that, on that in just a moment. So, the first thing we're going to look at is this scenario. Alright, so here we have a just a regular old React application. You have a style sheet and you have your bundle and I'm just putting some content here to illustrate a point. So we are on slash food. This is what the page is going to look like. This is our entire React application. So if I now go to my network tab like this and I set my state here to slow 3G, watch what happens. So now I am on a slow mobile device. The first thing that happens here is that you see Foo for the longest time and you see the background styling because, because what's happened is that the HTML has been parsed, the main.css file has been fetched and now finally all that JavaScript gets to the client and you can actually show the page. How did that feel? Well, it wasn't great, and if we look at the 
at the screen capture here, we see that the first at 2.09 seconds, like for that, basically this is the first thing we see. Because this is what a, the HTML is going to show to the user while we're waiting for all that JavaScript. The next thing you're going to see is this. And finally, you will see the image because the image is being fetched from an external source. And I'm doing this intentionally. I'm getting this from my LinkedIn profile just to illustrate to show you that you, you may not have resources that you have on the same server so that you think content depending on where you're getting it from can actually come in in different ways. It can come slower or faster. There's all things, kinds of things that are, can happen. Now, let's just very quickly actually show you the code for, for this thing. So we grab React, React DOM, we have a list item which is just a list element. We have this div here with the image and we have my name in a P tag and then basically we have the lorem ipsum here and then we have this nice little application that all it does is that it creates 20 instances of this little list item here in a list and pushes it to the UL and then it renders to the document. Now this is not that much JavaScript. I want you to notice this. This is our entire application, and did you and you could feel how painful it was uh, in this simulated experience. Now you can do other things. You can gzip things, and you can improve the 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 the, um, the speed at which you get things to the to the client. But let's just just bear with me. These are the CSS styles virtually. These are the there and there's not much that CSS either. This is all the styling that is required in order to show the thing that you saw earlier. And as you can see, like there's almost nothing going on there, and the painful experience you just saw is still there. So what can we do if we didn't touch, if we if we just exclude trying to reduce this down because honestly there is not much you can do like this is the whole application you uh, there and you still have this painful experience well let's look at another way of solving this problem so here we have my slightly nicer experience let's do the same thing so we're waiting we're waiting and boom do you see this this is, in my experience, and it's this is not that uncommon. There are a few major players out there on the web who are using this content placeholder technique that gives the user a sensation of that something just happened. Because in the previous example, you you felt that it, it, it the imagine if you didn't even do the base styling. Imagine if the page was just white. It would have felt for the longest time to the user as if the page was broken. The, and this is the, the the way that your user is going to feel or rather the sensation is going to be that y they have to wait for a very, very long time. But if you have an experience like this, at least you give something to look at. You, you get, and you, with the progression animation that you saw earlier, it feels to the user as if you're give, you're, you're basically giving them something to work with, as you can see here, I can just click over here. This is, in my opinion, something that is, we, what, what, this is the perceived user experience and the perceived load time is better. It's, uh, th that's actually at least what this technique is, is after. And let's just have a look at how this is actually implemented. So the way that you get this effect is that first and foremost you need to have a style tag which is because what you want is for the styles that are required to do this CSS animation to be in place as quickly as humanly possible and it is important that this happens before you actually load the main style sheet and the reason why we we want that to be in place is because we want to have the styles as quickly as possible so you put the critical CSS if you will in the head of the document so that it's parsed with the document and then we can see, see here that I have just statically added placeholder content with these magical CSS classes that we'll walk through in just a moment to to give 
a template that is just there to give the user to look to, something to look at that kind of indicates where all the content is going to go when this when finally this JavaScript file is is included. Now, some of you are going to tell me that hey, you can do server side rendered React and stuff of that nature. And yes, you can absolutely do that. But I think that if you don't have that option, because th that's not always an option, and sometimes that's fairly heavy, this is a very nice. I, I think this is a very nice experience because some languages don't really have good support for server side React. And yeah, I just. I think that this is a good technique to know about. So let's just walk through the CSS here. So we have a background animation that changes the background position of whatever it is by an arbitrary number virtually. And so we have some, we have basically a grid layout here. But actually, you know, it probably is better if we just go through it this way. Let's have a look at this, this list item here. So we can see here that we are displaying a f this is just a div which is just it's just a flex box with space between so you can distribute these two elements and then there's this p tag and so forth like this is the base styling now if i just remove this thing here and we remove this thing here we basically set it back to online so now we're just gonna have this element here so let's look at the content placeholder instead of the actual styling that's much better so we see that we're using CSS grid here for the list item which gives us this very nice column layout where the first element is as we saw the div earlier it's just a flex box with basically an alignment and then we have a placeholder image you can see all the styling here out in the outline and then this is just a div which is set to a specific width and it has basically just a, uh, a set height and so forth and the same thing goes for these things these are just different divs with a little bit of height and since you're using CSS grid which is pretty awesome it, you don't have to set any widths or anything like that, unless you do what I did for this last one here, for example, which is just going to set a max width because uh, you, you do. I just use the last child here and I set the max width to 200 so that it looks a little bit more like text. And that's the whole technique. So the animation part of this, maybe let's just walk through the animation part here. Yes, you can see the animation is just one second and it has the fill mode of forward so that the gradient actually goes forward. Iteration counts as infinite so it just keeps on looping and then the, you, you, we basically have the animation name as you saw earlier, which is this thing here. And da, 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 yeah, yeah it, th this may not be all that exciting, but the, 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 these are the styles that you basically use in order to achieve this effect. And although this is not a perfect experience, ideally you want things to load instantly, I think that this is a very nice middle ground between having an experience where they have to, like, ideally th this is what you want to do for all your SPAs, because trust me, the user's experience with this is much nicer than if they have to sit there for the absolute amount of time, longest amount of time and basically just stare at the blank screen. Hopefully you'll f you'll apply this in your own applications and that you I hope that you found this video useful. Have a great day.